So what's the relationship between ambition and time? More specifically, how does our perception of time affect what we choose to do with our lives? For example, if we have more time that's available to us, does that mean that we'll likely be more ambitious? Logically, it makes sense. If we have more time, we can take on bigger and better things, or more things. And if that's true, is the inverse also true? If we have less time, should we expect less of ourselves? These are the questions I want to try and address with you today. So what is ambition? Ambition is that deep-seated desire we have to achieve our goals. For myself, as a resident doctor, it's to become the best doctor I can possibly be. It's the reason why I wake up early in the morning to go to the hospital. It's the reason why I stay up late studying into the night. Ambition asks me to make those short-term sacrifices so I can reach my long-term goal of providing the best patient care possible. And when we think about other ambitious people, these are the types that spring to mind. Albert Einstein, Hussein Bolt, Bill Gates. So why aren't we all so ambitious? Why aren't we all doing more? To explore this, I asked my friends and family one simple question. Why aren't you taking on more ambitious challenges with your life? Three of the most common answers I got back were, I don't have the skills, I don't know the right people, I don't have the money. But time and time again, the number one thing I heard was, Derek, I don't have the time. And that all sounds pretty reasonable. We're all very busy people with very little free time. But is it really true? Do we really have so little free time that we can't pursue our dreams? The average North American has a lifespan of 80 years. And if we take out younger life and older life, we're down to 47. If we take out weekends, we're down to 34. And if we're sleeping eight hours a day, we're down to 22. But 22 years is still a pretty good chunk of time. You can do a lot in 22 years. And when you look at these three again, they were all able to achieve their goals in 22 years. I'm not saying that we should all expect to achieve as much as they have. Clearly, they're exceptional. But is 22 years really that short of a time? And what about those people who have even less than 22 years? Should we expect even less of them? In my work as a physical medicine and rehabilitation resident doctor, I work with patients who have chronic illnesses, physical and mental impairments, and life-limiting diseases. And it's these last group of people, the people with the life-limiting diseases, who won't have those 22 years. And I think by examining their stories, we can learn a lot about the relationship between ambition and time. I want to take you on a journey today, and that will involve talking through two thought experiments, where you will be the patient with a life-limiting disease. And this will be interactive. I'm not going to ask for participation or volunteers, but I'm going to pose a number of questions. And I'd like you to commit to an answer to them. So let's get started. The first case is about an uncertain timeline and what impact does that have on your ambition. So imagine you're a healthy 25-year-old. Life is great. You have friends and family that you're close to, 
and you have a stable job that you love. But then one day, out of the blue, you just don't quite feel right. And you go to your doctor, and they do a number of tests, and they tell you it's cancer. You have a risky surgery, and thankfully, you survive. But what does this do to your perception on life? One day, you're healthy. The next, you find out you have a disease that might kill you. After your surgery, the cancer might be gone for good, or it could come back just as quickly. You've gone from a timeline that looks like this to one that looks like this. You have no idea how much time you have left or how much time you have to achieve your goals. So what are you going to do with your time and your life? And this is the interactive portion. If we break down your life into these four categories, self, home, work, and community, I'd like you to commit to a set of answers to these next questions. How would you treat yourself? Would you eat healthily and exercise? Would you push yourself to learn and to grow? What kinds of hobbies would you take on? Would you start a family? Would you work? How would you engage with the community around you? Would you try and make the world a better place? Let's hold on to your answers, because we'll come back to them a little bit later. So the th second thought experiment is about the effect of a shortened timeline. <coughs> Imagine you're born with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. It's a rare inherited disorder of the muscles for which there's no known cure. You'll likely be diagnosed before you're five years old because your arms and your legs will be weak, meaning you'll have difficulty climbing stairs and running. And as you grow older, the disease progresses. Progresses to the point where by the time you're between seven and 12 years old, you'll likely be dependent on a wheelchair. And keep in mind that this disease will affect all the muscles in your body, including your heart and your diaphragm. All of this means you probably won't see your 30th birthday. You've gone from a timeline that looks like this to one that looks like this, a 30-year timeline and 10 years to achieve your goals. And this is one of the most optimistic cases. So what are you going to do with those 10 years? And again, I'll ask you to commit to some answers. How would you treat yourself? What would home life look like? Would you work? What would your relationship with the community be? And again, hold on to those answers, because we'll come back to them shortly. So the last two thought experiments we just discussed aren't just made up. They're based on the real life stories of two people who I've had the honor of knowing. And in the next few minutes, I'll tell you their stories. And when I'm doing that, I'd like you to examine the answers that you gave and compare it to the people who lived those realities. The first thought experiment about an uncertain timeline is based on my friend and colleague, Aaron Higgins. Aaron was born in 1984 in Perry Sound. He's a massive fan of the Maple Leafs and the Blue Jays. He's a junior A hockey goalie and the drummer in a band. At 21, he graduated as a chemical engineer and went on to design and test nuclear power plants. 
At 23, he was diagnosed with a rare form of liver cancer and underwent a risky surgery, which he survived. But while he was recovering in the hospital, he found he wasn't very happy with the bedside manner of his doctors, and he thought he could do better. After recovering and getting back on his feet, he decided to apply to medical school in Ireland. And at 26, he was accepted, and he was a year ahead of me. At 28, he married his amazing wife, Jennifer. And at 30, he graduated from medical school, despite constantly flying back and forth between Canada and Ireland for ongoing cancer treatment. At 31, he had an amazing baby girl, Georgia. And at 32, unfortunately, the cancer recurred, and we lost Aaron that same year. Aaron's story is a sad one. But it's also one that I think we can learn a lot of lessons from. At 23, Aaron faced his own mortality. He didn't know if he had five months or 50 years. But what he did know is that he wanted to make the world a kinder and better place by being the type of doctor that he didn't have. He started on the long journey to become a doctor without ever knowing if he would finish. The uncertainty of Aaron's timeline didn't make him any less ambitious. If anything, I think it made him more ambitious and pushed him harder to achieve more with the time that he had. The second thought experiment about a shortened timeline is based on Eilish Chan. Eilish was born in Etobicoke in 1993. He was diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy at the age of two when his parents noted he had difficulty crawling. He's been described by friends and family as shy, diligent, strong-minded, and an excellent listener. His favorite colors are yellow and green, and just like Aaron, huge fan of the Blue Jays, and is also a hockey goalie. As the disease progressed, his muscles weakened, and at the age of 10, he was dependent on a wheelchair. And despite these setbacks, Eilish worked hard, and as a result, graduated from high school on time at the age of 18. His passion at the time was urban planning, which led him to apply to university. He was accepted into the University of Guelph and was awarded multiple scholarships. Eilish excelled at university, but he was also involved in numerous extracurricular activities, all of which involved giving back to his community. Through his hard work and dedication, he graduated from university at the age of 24 with distinction. And unfortunately, due to the progression of his disease, last year, he had a choking episode, which meant that he spent over 200 days in hospital. But through sheer force of will, Eilish survived. And we're lucky enough to have him here with us today. Eilish isn't quite back at 100% health yet, but he's eager to heal. His ambition, once he's healthy again, is to become a full-time accessibility consultant at the university so he can help other people achieve their goals. Eilish is such an amazing individual. I've never met anybody with so much grit and tenacity who just blows it off as if it was nothing. When talking to him about ambition and time, it just doesn't compute. 
Throughout his entire life, he's just set his goals and he's gone after them. Time has never been a consideration. And that brings us back to the beginning. What have Aaron and Eilish's stories taught us about ambition and time? I think their stories have told us that there is no relationship, that I don't have time is an excuse. And I'm not saying that you should take on every single thing that comes along your path, but when you do find something that you're truly passionate about, time should not be a consideration. You need to dig deeper, think about why you're not pursuing your goals and why you're using time as an excuse. Are you afraid of a challenge? Are you afraid to fail? Or are you just procrastinating? Whatever the case may be, I'll leave you with two more things. What will you do with your time? And how can you become more like Aaron and Eilish? Thank you.